kindness. And I thought it was really important to highlight this today because as leaders, kindness is extremely important. But as leaders, we also weigh, we have that balance where we're trying to make sure that ki our kindness isn't taken as weakness. And the reality is kindness, there's strength in kindness. However, for some of us, we struggle with that, right? Because just imagine if you've been through some certain things um, within the workplace and you wanna make sure that you get the level of respect and you get the level of like people look at you as a leader. So some of us create certain barriers because we're afraid that that might toe the line of leader and, you know, team member. And we're just trying to make sure we stay in that lane. However, we have to be strategic about it because, again, essentially kindness is a benefit. It is a benefit to be kind. So today's theme is kindness is not a weakness. We have to really consider that kindness is not a weakness. What's up, um, Adonis? Um, shout out to Adonis. He's on these calls that we've been talking about, but um, I'm taking the information that we do on the accountability calls and talking it and applying it to leaders and talking about how kindness is not a weakness in regards to leadership, right? Because again, we're trying to make sure that we stay and have that separatism in regards to I'm a leader, we have our team members, but we have to also remember that it's important that we look at kindness as a strength, even as a leader, we see the benefits of it. So for a lot of us, the reason why some of us are fearful of kindness, especially as leaders, is because potentially you have been in situations where someone has taken advantage of you. Maybe you have a team member and, hey, you were letting them um, take their leave or you were allowing them to do certain things. And then on the other side, something negative happened. So now you feel like you were taken advantage of, which might now affect how you support the rest of your team members. Now you're feeling like, man, I think they're taking my kindness for a weakness. So let me let me shift a little bit of how I cheat. I'm going to move forward with the rest of my team members. Right. It could be something personal. People that um, have hurt you. Um, I thought they would reciprocate. Right. I thought they were my friend. I thought they loved me. I feel like I have to do it because the reality is we have to remember as leaders, a lot of the pains and the traumas and the experiences that we had could also affect how we show up in the workplace. It can affect how we lead our teams. So you might be fearful of kindness because of personal reasons or things that happened in the past. So now as a leader, you're exerting this type of energy and you don't want to give too much from your perspective because again, you have been hurt in the past. So so sometimes people fear kindness because, especially as a leader, because you have been through, maybe one of these statements applied to you, maybe all of them apply to you. I know for me as a leader coming, especially a lot of my fear of kindness came from my migration from West Africa to the United States. And I wasn't necessarily accepted. You know, as a little girl, I was bullied. Um, I always felt like I had to navigate the world a little bit differently so I can fit into American culture. So I will look at kindness as weakness. And that followed me even into my leadership position. And that's why I say sometimes our traumas can affect our leadership. So again, even if it's not something that happened in the workplace, it might have been something that happened in your personal life. And now when you're in certain roles, you're just like, ah, I got to make sure I don't tell that line. I can't be too kind because I'll be taken advantage of. I don't want to be too kind because people don't reciprocate because again, that's the learning that you've gotten because of the past. So again, this is why a lot of people might fear kindness. And I want you to do your kindness check. Why does kindness, right? If it's for you, because not, this might not apply to anyone, everyone, but this might apply to a team member. You might have a team member that has these fears, or you might have someone that's a future leader that is afraid to be kind because again, they see it as weakness. But one thing that I want us to recognize that in the brain, right? Emotional pain and physical pain, they go hand in hand. The interesting part is when you go through emotional pain, your brain and your body can go through the same emotions and the same feelings physically that you would go through if it was physical pain. Some people go through emotional pain and they get shortness of breath. You might have aches and pains, a headache. So emotional pain can actually have the same effects as physical pain and even trigger physical pain. So we react to emotional pain in the same manner as physical pain. And how do we typically prevent emotional pain or physical pain. We don't do it again. We decide that we're not going to do that activity. If you hurt your knee, if something happened, you're just like, ooh, that didn't feel right. What are you going to do? You're going to try to not do it again. And that's the same thing that happens when you deal with some type of level of kindness. You did something for someone at the workplace. You did something for someone outside the workplace. They didn't reciprocate or they took advantage of it, right? And say this happens multiple times. Now you're like, you know what? I'm going to prevent this feeling of emotional 
emotional pain and I'm not going to do this activity. I'm not going to show up and I'm not going to support my team members effectively. So now you're not really pouring into people effectively because, again, you're trying to prevent the pain from what has happened in the past. You're trying to keep that from happening again. So that prevents us from showing up in the workplace with that level of kindness, with that level of support, because we're thinking about past things that happens. But again, there is positivity. There's good things in being kind. So that's why I think it's really important to tie that into leadership, because as leaders, a lot of the things that we're going to experience, we have to be able to put it in the right boxes so we can still support our team members effectively. Right. So again, emotional pain can affect you just like physical pain. And you try to prevent it and not do that activity, which eventually can show up in the workplace where you can lead effectively because you don't want to go through that uh, that situation that you did in the past. Right. So what kind of things can you do, right? What kind of things you can do to remedy that feeling? Because as leaders, we have to be able to balance, you know, the bottom line, but we also are change agents. We need to be able to tap into kindness. We need to be able to tap into those good things so we can really engage our team members effectively. So remember, when you are supporting your team members or when you're thinking about doing kind things, don't do it out of fear. Are you doing it out of fear or are you being truly kind? Because again, some of us, you have other people that respond differently when they feel like they have to do something. So you also have to check why you do what you do. Make sure that it's purely coming from a good place. And if it's not, ask yourself why that's happening because we wanna make sure we're showing up for the right reason. We need to also re remember, we have to create boundaries as, as leaders, right? We have to know when to say yes, and we have to say no sometimes. And that's self-kindness, because if you end up doing things that you don't feel comfortable doing, or say you're on the other side of the spectrum, where you are doing things or not doing things because of past triggers, then that could also affect how you show up. So it's just about creating boundaries. How can I still be kind as a leader, be supportive as a leader and make sure I'm not taking advantage of? Well, again, it's just creating that balance, creating that boundary, right? Just like DeAndre said, address the pain instead of putting a band-aid over it. Amen, right? You have a lot of people who go to physical therapy. You have a lot of people who have these aches and pains and that's how you address it. But then you have a lot of people who don't address it. They actually just put a band-aid over it they're just like i don't want to go to the doctor and what happens it festers it ends up really festering inside and then what happens after that then it ends up being worse than what it is so just like deandre said address the pain instead of putting a band-aid over it you have to get to the root cause of why you're showing up the way you do so i love that you highlighted that so creating boundaries is important as a leader but on the other side, create the boundaries and also know when to, okay, when I need to tap into this side of me and then when to tap into the other side of me, right? Remember that there's strength and kindness because it's a trickle effect. People see that there's hope. They see that there are good things in the world. They see that, okay, this leader actually is pretty cool. They're actually pretty nice. They know how to balance both sides. So make sure that you identify and know that kindness, there's strength in it. But again, creating those boundaries are gonna be important too because we have to put on our leadership Hat or the bottom line hat sometimes. And then finally, it's really important that you realize that be kind and not expect anything in return. Because a lot of us are affected because we had expectations, right? We do something and that's why you have to always check why you do what you do. Because sometimes our expectations can hurt us and our expectations that we had, oh, if I did this, I expected this. But you need to start going into things not expecting anything in return. Yes, create the plan that you, um, the developmental plan that you have for your team members. Create everything that's necessary Necessary to develop them hope you know of course you have the expectations for them it's clear-cut but sometimes we have additional expectations that we never discussed with the person right I've been guilty of it you do something and you expect someone to do it in return and you've never even had the conversation with that person they don't know that was an expectation of yours so you have to also go into think things not expecting anything in return create your standards, sit down and break down your expectations for your team members. But if you do something above and beyond to support them, why do you have that additional expectation? And also realize that by having expectations, you might end up hurting yourself in the process. And then now you're back into the cycle where we were talking about again, where now you're fearing being kind because you're afraid of being taken advantage of. So I want you to always recognize when it comes to kindness, we have to honestly and really make sure we're doing it for the right reasons 
Also remember to create the right kind of boundaries that we need to do as leaders because we have to be able to manage and support our team members and also discipline, hold people accountable, and also need to know that we need to be change agents and support them effectively. Realize that there's strength in kindness, right? And make sure that you don't expect anything in return, especially if you didn't have the response or the conversation with them about it. DeAndre said, if the expectation isn't met, don't allow it to affect your approach. Exactly. Because that's the reality. Sometimes the expectation isn't met. But have your process in place. Have the ones and twos in place of how you're going to address it. And again, when it comes to expectations, make sure that you don't have false expectations or expectations of people that you haven't discussed with them about. Because that's how you might end up in a situation where now you're disappointed and now you're going through the cycle of being uncomfortable to be that leader that's of change because you're so afraid of being hurt. Create those boundaries, show up, support your team members because engagement is so important because Remember, like I always say, team members don't typically quit the organization. They tend to quit the leader. So that's why we have to be trend-setting leaders, uh, really promote change, and also realize how to balance, okay, the different hats that we're going to wear. So um, again, make sure you guys tune in every Friday. I do, like I said, I like to do this professional development, a personal development aspect and take a lot of these themes and show you how it also applies to leadership development as well, because it really does. Okay, so you really want to make sure that you're really shaping and changing who you, how you show up in the organization, because personally, sometimes we have to grow in order for us to show up effectively uh, professionally. DeAndre, sounds like you're saying communication is the key. Exactly. Communication is the key. And a lot of us leaders have to really develop that skill. A lot of us are afraid to, uh, some leaders are afraid to communicate. They don't know how to effectively communicate. So again, that's why I'm doing the series now why you need leadership development. Go to my link in my bio. It's a YouTube series and I talk about these different things because sometimes you have great le you have leaders that are great at communicating and you have some leaders that are afraid to do it or there are certain barriers that you have in certain skills. And that's why we need constant leadership development, personal development, so we can build upon those skills so we can show up right in the workplace. So I appreciate you guys tuning in. Again, go to the link in my bio, check out that series, why you need leadership development. This past Last week, we talked about emotional intelligence and how you need to lead yourself. Um, and last week, we talked about that overall goal of why you need leadership development. So make sure you check that out. Um, share, hit that airplane, share this with somebody who needs it. And, I got, and I'll see you guys next week. And I appreciate you guys tuning in. And again, my name is Aisha Thomas. I'm your leadership and team development expert. And remember, team members typically don't quit the organization. They typically quit the leader. Let's be trendsetting leaders.